Hey, I got David down here. <laughs> How you doing, brother? I came to see the Great Dane. Tell us what you brought in to show us. Well, this is my 76 Les Paul Custom. 1976. I bought it in 76 from Zavarella's Music. Okay. From Zav's Music Store. And it Where's was, Zab's at? Zavarella was in Arlington, Virginia. Oh, wow. Okay, and uh, a bunch of us dealt with him, and Zav was a badass, okay? He was a badass. The day I bought this Les Paul from him, I went in there. I had read this article in Guitar Player Magazine by Dickie Betts, and Dickie Betts said, when you go to buy a Les Paul, you got to play a dozen of them. Mm -hmm. you got to take it in the bathroom mm -hmm. and listen to it sonically. If it sounds good in the bathroom without an amp, it's going to sound great. And it's a good idea to take it in the bathroom with a black light and turn the lights out and check for cracks and repairs, too. Huh, yeah. Well, these were all new ones. And yeah. I told Zav, I said, Zav, I'm going to the bathroom. Bring me a dozen Les Pauls. And he said, I swear <laughs> to God, he yeah. said, <laughs> everybody read that article. He said, I'm sick of you guys coming in here with that crap. <laughs> he says, and he handed me this guitar. He said, I'll sell you this. Take okay. it or get out of my store. <laughs> wow. And it's a number two. I understand being a little bit, um, you know, sometimes being so customer friendly once in a while, you just tell people, just buy the guitar and get out of here. The customer's always right, except it's Zav's, Zavarella. Zav was a sweet, Zavarella. he was a sweetheart of a guy. I hope he's still alive. I don't think he's still in business, but I hope I hope he is. All right, well, he sold me, me this guitar. Set it back up here on the top so I can get a good look at this old thing. Four hundred and forty bucks. Four hundred and forty bucks in nineteen seventy six. With the case, Let's that's a custom. great year for music. And then I took it over to Washington Music Center. Okay, because uh -huh. a guy named Marty worked on my guitars. Uh huh. But Marty was on vacation. Guess who was taking Marty's place while he's on vacation? Well, you told me a few minutes ago, but I won't... Uh... I think the guy's name was Paul Reed Smith. So Paul himself worked on this guitar. Yes. What did he do to this one? He put the trim rings on for me. Trim rings? They were called slot tops in the old days. Oh, okay. Slot tops? Because, you know, obviously the pickups so were that's covered. So the, that's the brass part on there yes. that goes around the pickup. Yep. and that's been on but there forever. But it doesn't cover the pole pieces on nope. the top. Nope, nope. That's why I bought them. I don't think I've ever seen that. I thought it was neat looking. I thought it was cool looking. That and he put this in, my face switch. I don't use that very much. It's it said They say you can get kind of a Strat sound. Ugh, no, it doesn't face, sound. A face switch. Well, you know, it's uh, a, 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 what do you call a cool tap? Uh, okay. It's just a cool tap. So, um, these are... T-tops. T-tops from 1976. Yeah, we could, take them out. we could take them out and I'll show oh, you. Oh, that's fine. We don't need to go through all that. Yeah, because I took them out and I took, uh, I took it apart because I belonged to a Les Paul group that a guy named Skeeter Whitaker started. Hmm. I, hell, you belong to that. I've seen you on there. What? Norland era Les Pauls. Oh, I, I probably put some of these videos that oh, I Skeet's make on Oh, Skeet's a there. badass player, pal, and he knows oh. a lot of badass players and all. Uh, they uh, they love New Orleans. They they love New Orleans, and you know it's funny because the guys from England don't like them. And we hope that everybody keeps saying they're junk. Nobody likes them. Blah blah blah. They're trash to keep the price down. Because let me ask you something else. Um, are oh, there Paul little Reed's nibs on the Paul on Reed's, the edge um, side here? Oh, it's been refretted, huh? Paul Reed Smith refretted this guitar. Wow. What did he charge you? What year was that, and what did he charge you to do I, that? Gosh, it was 77, 78 maybe. I, I had uh -huh. it for a while. I don't remember. Whatever it cost. I didn't care back then. Uh -huh. <laughs> I didn't care. Did you ever think Paul was going to go from refretting your guitar to being one of the largest manufacturers in the world? Nobody was good. Yeah. He was. He had a passion, and the guy was good. I'm telling you, man, the setup on this guitar was fabulous. I set him up myself, but he did it one better. And he told me, he said, you, it needs frets. I said, it's a pretty new guitar. Why do we want to refret this? And he said, if you put jumbo frets on this, he said, you will love it. You'll love it, huh? Yeah, and, they and he was a, right. They got a lot of life in them still, huh? Well, those frets have been on there since, what, 77? That's good. <laughs> so it was only a year old when you had it refretted. Yeah. Wow. I just did that because Paul said you should refret this he guitar. Recommended he recommended it, and you went since for he was it. doing all this other work, I said, well, "Go ahead and do it." Mm -hmm. And you know, I, not, I don't think he worked on too many guitars after PRS started. After he started making his own guitars, he made a he made a good guitar uh, back then. 
But do me a favor and flip it over on its side so we can see the back of it. All right, so we're looking at the back and the original. Um, Gibson, everything's original. Everything's, everything's original. original except the pick card. Okay. Now I see a number two right there. What's yeah, the story? Yeah, that meant it was a factory second. And I think you got like 200 bucks off. And it doesn't affect the way it plays, it doesn't affect the way it sounds. And, you know, nobody's ever said, oh, is that a second? <laughs> Nobody cares. And now the back of this is very <coughs> impressive because this is not some guy out in his woodshed relicking this. This is you playing this guitar yeah, for the guitar last 40 there. some years. Yeah. And that's what the back of this neck is supposed to look like. Okay. This is what a relic is supposed to look like. Yeah. This is the real deal. This is from playing it. And you can see that you've got three piece. You can actually see see the three piece maple neck right you there. You know more about Les Paul. Oh, Paul's this is maple. This isn't even the mahogany neck. Oh, it's maple, is it? That looks like maple to me. Oh hell, I don't know. Oh, I did put that on brass. I put brass and on back here. And it has a small volute. I'm gonna say this is a maple neck. Paul, what do you say? That's a maple neck, isn't it? It's definitely maple. Yeah, that's oh, the 1970s. Okay. That that, that's good. They won't snap. Oh, okay. Like a mahogany <laughs> neck will. Oh, okay. Have you ever accidentally dropped this thing? Yeah. In all those years, and that's why your neck hasn't snapped. Oh, you got a maple neck on this. Thing. It's 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 it, it's never been dropped on a volute like I did with the SG. That's yeah. how I met Paul. Reed and Smith. it does have a very small volute, so it's like not one of those big honking huge okay. ones. It's very small because this is maple. And then you can see on the side of the guitar here that it's the two piece. Should I ever have this refinished in your Hell opinion? Hell no. Okay, no. leave it alone. Okay, <laughs> okay. I see trust the, you guys. Let me see the side of the guitar right here. Because oh, she's a little you can dirty see right that now. this is the two-piece pancake body that they used in the 70s. I believe it's the Norland era. Yeah, Norland era. And these are, supposedly the guys in England say these guitars suck, but I, I don't know. Well, nobody listens to those guys in yeah. England anyhow. Thank you. And then you had a little story about your pick guard right here. Yeah, I, I bought a, a clear pick guard. And the old lady was cleaning the guitar for me, and she broke it. So I had to, what, what's that, uh, Gorilla Glue? She was probably trying to get under it. Yes, she was. Yes, she uh -huh. was. And the damn thing snapped off on her. And she, so she went into 47 Conniptions, went out and bought a but new she's one. she's sad. But, the, oh, God, yeah. She, she killed my baby. And, uh, but the holes didn't line up. I said, I'm not drilling this guitar <laughs> just for a damn pick guard. And actually, if you could make me a clear plastic pick guard exactly like that with those holes lying up there, that would be perfect. I know a guy. Do you? Mm -hmm. See, I, I, then this was a worthwhile trip. He's got a CNC machine. He'll cut, cut one out for you. Okay. Me. Then I need to go see that guy and get this replaced. You know, it's not and that big a deal. I still got the original. Everything's original. You got yourself a really cool guitar. Ebony board. She, and she sounds really good. Lock inlays. Paul Reed Smith himself worked on this thing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Paul Reed Smith. The only thing left is for you to play it for us a little bit. <laughs> We're going to plug it into something. Here we go. with this thing too but it likes I know mm -hmm. 